Hi, Cześć from Warsaw. For me, the biggest surprise of the pandemic economy is the unexpected and sudden growth in the art and antiques market. In Poland in 2020, the official turnover alone was 30% higher than the year before. In contrast, in the countries of Western Europe, the trend was reversed. What is the source of this growth? On the one hand, wealthy Poles invest in art and the money withdrawn from banks because the record low interest rates on deposits combined with inflation mean that savings accumulated in banks melt down instead of growing. Art, apart from investments in real estate, gold and bonds, is treated by them as an investment of capital. On the other hand, the paintings are bought by ordinary people who, during the lockdown, started empty walls in their apartments and wanted to fill them with something that would make their home office more pleasant for them. This is news from Poland, business and law, a synthesis for foreign directors of Polish companies, foreign investors in Poland and their foreign lawyers. Let's start from general trends in the Polish economy. As I speak, it is the end of February 2021. The government allowed all stores in shopping malls to open on 1st February. Due to the unfriendly climate in autumn and winter, so-called galleries constitute a very important segment of Polish trade. Nevertheless, they have drawn 25% fewer visitors than before the pandemic. This is because restaurants and coffee shops continue to be closed there. Decreased traffic also stems from the closure of movie theatres. They can operate from 12 February, but have not decided to open. This is primarily because film distributors have refrained from releasing new films, and secondly, because beverages and snacks like popcorn, constituting a significant source of revenue, cannot be sold. Moreover, many customers have become accustomed to purchasing online. The persistently lower footfall results in pressure from tenants to renegotiate lease agreements in order to lower rental rates. And in a situation where the rent depends on the tenant's turnover, simply lower revenues of shopping centers and difficulties in servicing their bank loans. Industrial output remains high. In January 2021, it was several percentage points higher than in January 2020, i.e. before the pandemic. Exports continue to break records because the pandemic has caused demand in Western Europe for durable goods, such as household appliances like washing machines and dishwashers, of which Poland is the largest producer in Europe. Moreover, recently Poland, thanks to the investments of Korean and German companies, has become a significant exporter of batteries for electric cars. The situation in the restaurant and hotel sector is, however, difficult. It is estimated that one-fifth of restaurants will remain closed even when restrictions are lifted. Even up to 250,000 out of the approximately 1 million people employed in this sector may lose their jobs. About half of the workforce were laid off by the hotels. I will now discuss changes in Polish law. In my previous program, I discussed a so-called moratorium on the filing of bankruptcy petitions, which was introduced in Polish law in April 2020. A second solution, serving to forestall an uncontrolled tsunami of bankruptcy applications, was the introduction into Polish law in June 2020 of a so-called simplified restructuring proceeding. It is quite quick, deformalized and highly, highly beneficial to firms facing bankruptcy. It provides protection against creditor enforcement and termination of contracts as well as opportunity to reduce debt, if agreed to by creditors. This protection is activated through actions of a debtor and without the need to obtain a court judgment. This is the primary advantage of this procedure, at least from a debtor's standpoint. Notably, debtors may apply this procedure regardless of whether insolvency arose during the, the epidemic or in connection with COVID-19. What is the course of this procedure? I will explain this step by step. First. A company facing bankruptcy prepares a list of liabilities, also disputed, and a so-called arrangement proposal. Usually, it provides for minor creditors to be paid off in full in order to eliminate them swiftly. In turn, major company creditors, whose receivables are the main reason for insolvency, are usually offered repayment in installments and a debt reduction by a specified percentage. Next, a company hires a licensed restructuring advisor with whom it consults on arrangement proposals and who will supervise company operations during simplified restructuring. 
Another step vital in this procedure is publication in the court and business monitor of a company announcement about uh, the commencement of proceedings to approve an arrangement. The date of announcement is the date of commencement of such proceedings. Therefore, proceedings commence automatically through such announcement. As is evident, no court judgment is necessary to commence such proceedings. In an announcement, the company indicates a so-called arrangement date. It cannot fall earlier than seven days prior to a submitted application for an announcement and later than seven days after its submission. Status on the arrangement date applies to creditor rights to vote on an arrangement and the outcome of an adopted arrangement. Significantly, an arrangement covers liabilities arising prior to the arrangement date. Liabilities arising after the arrangement date are not subject to an arrangement and should be met by the company on an ongoing basis. From the date of announcement to the date of conclusion of proceedings. Firstly, enforcement with regard to unsecured creditors as well as creditors secured with debt that, or assets, for example by mortgage, pledge or reg registered pledge, is suspended by law. Protection of a debtor against enforcement is thereby automatic from the time of announcement. Secondly, initiation of new enforcement or execution of a judgment to secure claims on company property is prohibited. Thirdly, also prohibited is fulfillment of obligations from receivables that are by law subject to an, ar an arrangement, namely those that arose prior to the announcement date. Fourthly, without permission from the arrangement supervisor, a landlord cannot terminate an agreement on lease of premises or property where a debtor's enterprise operates. The same applies to loan agreements, leasing agreements, property insurance, surety agreements and agreements dealing with licenses granted to a debtor. Fifthly, from the announcement date, a company management board can only engage in ordinary management. For example, purchase office supplies or pay rent. Actions exceeding the scope of ordinary management require arrangement supervisor consent. Such actions performed without required consent are invalid. This serves to ensure protection of creditors against the dilution of debtor assets. Upon setting of the arrangement date, a debtor collects votes in writing by offering creditors a voting ballot. A creditors meeting resolution accepting an arrangement is adopted with a majority of creditors jointly holding at least two thirds of total receivables of all voting creditors casting a valid ballot. Next, an arrangement supervisor officially declares acceptance of an arrangement and the company files an application for arrangement approval in court. If such application is not filed in court within four months from the announcement date, proceedings are discontinued by law. In conclusion, a company has four months to conclude an arrangement. A court issues a decision on approval of an arrangement within two weeks from the date of filed application. A decision approving arrangement may be appealed by creditors not concurring with its, with its substance. The deadline to file a complaint is two weeks. If a court, as a result of such complaints, refuses to approve an arrangement, a debtor may submit a simplified application to commence a remedial proceedings. It is a type of restructuring that, is also, that also provides protection against enforcement or a simplified application to declare bankruptcy. Simplified restructuring is presently the most popular type of restructuring proceeding. Debtors have concluded an arrangement with creditors in the vast majority of such proceedings. That is all in this episode. I wish you success in your business in Poland. Take care. See you soon.